Louisiana. We're in the box. We're in the box. What's so special about the box and what's happening here um, right now? Well, we use this as one of our combat training centers, and what we have, we immerse our units in the training um, that's here. We have a professional opposing force that also has the latest technology, and this is where we learn, adapt, and transform, and that's what we're using. And this is our fourth brigade that we have basically brought through here and we are completely changing the technology that they're using, how they're organized, and then how they operate. So it's a very special place to us. You're changing the technology. You're also changing the way you interact with industry and that technology yeah. and how you acquire that technology. Yeah. It's, it's a paradigm shift, in a yeah. sense, for the Army. Well, I think we have to have a paradigm shift. We're seeing you know, how rapidly the battlefield is changing. And a lot of this technology, I mean, working directly with industry, we have the best industry um, that's out there and the best tech, and getting them actually to come out here and partner with our soldiers and, and see. It's different when you're out here uh, in the woods, in tough environments, in the weather, operating 24-7 and doing the kinds of things that, you know, that we have to do and have to be prepared to do in, those, in that environment. Having those engineers see that, I think, makes a difference for them, too. The Army Transformation Initiative, big initiative that's yeah. just been unveiled in the last couple of weeks. Right. What does it mean? Why does it happen now? Um, well, I think what we're, you know, the Secretary Driscoll and I are trying to do is, is uh, we know our formations want to move faster, and we are trying to get the whole system, you know, to move much more rapidly. And so, you know, a big part of that is um, stop buying the things that we know are not going to be as effective on the battlefield so that we can infuse our formations with the things that, that really will be effective. And that's what this is all about, and this is what we're learning. Um, we're going to start buying things differently because technology is going to change, and we'll buy in we'll buy in tranches for some of the you know drones that we see. There's we've had different drones for every formation um, that we've had out here, and again, these same companies that are coming out here are making changes, making software changes, uh, basically right with our soldiers. So this idea of long-standing multi-year programs of record maybe go away depending on. The well, I think about. it depends on what product you're talking about. Um, we have, uh, you know, we have some technology that we can just adopt off the shelf, and there's a bunch of companies that are involved in that. There's other technology that we can modify, and then there's probably other technology that, you know, we will just need to develop a little bit more. But I think we're moving to the days where everything is going to be more modular. Everything is going to be software. I mean, like this right here, which is, you know, also robotic, you know, can be robotic, that we can modify um, things. That's where we, that's how we need to think. And that's how our soldiers think. They're very good at it. And I think you've seen that out here. Um, they're physically tough. Um, but they're also very innovative. AI and autonomy, how are they coming to the battlefield? How quickly can you get what you need now? Um, I, again, I think that what we have to do at our level is, is make sure that we're moving fast. I think a lot of this technology is out there. Um, we try to invite industry into every one of these rotations that we're doing. Um, and other companies to see what we need and what problems that we're going to solve. We've got, again, great, you've met some of them out here, some of these engineers that can help us do those things. So I think we can move faster uh, than we are, and that's kind of our commitment at our level. Our troops can handle the move. They can go fast. And so what we got to do is break down all the bureaucracy that comes above it to make sure that we're moving at the speed that we need for them. They're our number one customer. That's why we're doing what we're doing, and we need, we need to never forget that. You've canceled some programs or suggested canceling some programs. You've scuttled some programs that were under development just in the last couple of weeks. What don't you need anymore? Um, I think, again, some of these uh, programs, we have to make choices, and I always tell everybody does the same thing in their own personal budget, you know, where you decide what you really need to invest your money in and what is best, and that, that was what we did. We have done this. We have been out. Um, we have run simulations. We've been out in, the, in these kind of combat training centers to figure out what we need. We need to be more mobile. Uh, we need to be lower signature, um, so that is everything that's out here, and I think you've heard that over the last couple of days. Everything has a signature, so you're going to have to be um, low, lower uh, signature, and then we're looking at, at lean. We're trying to lighten out because 
you can be seen everywhere. And so um, that's how we're trying to focus um, on our formations. How do you get all stakeholders on board with this new vision for the Army? You mentioned bureaucracy. Um, not just not just soldiers, since the service is one of the largest employers in the country, period, yeah. but also lawmakers and industry and everybody else that you intersect with. Yeah, I've been with, uh, you know, we've been, both the secretary and I, we've talked to a lot of them. I think that they recognize, too, that we have to move faster. Um, we've, and everybody in general under, understands that, that we have to move much quicker. I think, you know, again, what our, you know, my battlefield is to make sure that I'm explaining this to everybody, what exactly we need um, and why we need it and you know to make the, make those arguments generally I've gotten very positive reception on exactly what that is and I think we need to get in this habit where we're, we talk about continuous transformation that we are constantly evolving and you know with the technology that's out there nobody's still using the VCR um, we don't need to continue to buy a VCR just because somebody sells it we need to have the latest technology that's on the battlefield. We're also looking at our people. What people skills do we need to change? You know, that's a lot of the discussions that we've had here today is figuring out, you know, what where do we need to have different, uh, we were talking about coders um, to help at the, you know, at the brigade level and, you know, what cyber um, spectrum managers and autonomous system operators do we need at every level? Um, so we're learning that out here as well. And I think that's really fascinating, too, because uh, when it comes to recruitment, does that mean that who you're looking for, how you're training them, and also, since I know you're looking to bring in the best and the brightest, yes. um, does that change the way that you're getting people to come and work with the Army? Sure. I mean, I think we're looking, uh, you know, just like we were talking about here, if you're going to sign up to be, you know, do something with cyber, you may be thinking you're in an office, and we certainly have some of those. Um, if you're out in a brigade combat team, you know you're gonna. It's you know you're gonna need different skill set, and you're signing up for something different. So that was a big part of uh, of this exercise was explaining that we're doing really well on recruiting. I'm very you know happy to report it. I think we're we have you know almost 100 percent of our mission, and we have some of our best uh, months um, that are coming you know in. So I came in the army as a brand new private, and I'm a. You know, I always tell everybody a perfect example that you can do anything and be anything you want in the, in the U.S. Army. So the mix between, of course, we got the skinny budget from the White House, the proposal, not that long ago. Um, we've got this spending package that is the reconciliation package that's, that's making its way through Congress. Um, how are you thinking about budget and that mix of budget between, for example, exquisite and some of these newer technologies that are maybe cheap, cheaper, faster to field and... Yeah, I mean, I think it's going to be a combination of things. What, you know, when I'm go going around telling leaders, and I think you heard me mention this a couple times, you know, our job is to make sure that we find value in every dollar um, that we spend. And so, you know, that's part of the conversation we've had out here is what, at what level do you need to have you know, mass and less, you know, expensive, and where do you need exquisite capabilities? Everything doesn't need to be exquisite. And I, I think we've seen this in the commercial, on the commercial side, where prices go down as technology gets better and you're doing things. So I think we're trying to balance all that out as we move forward. Um, lessons learned from Ukraine, from Middle yeah. East, from some of these other conflicts we've seen around the world and how they're finding their way back to places like the box. Right. So we are doing that, and we have uh, a distribution. We have folks that are completely focused on that all the time and make sure that we're getting that out to our formation. That was part of when they came in. You know, we're collecting those daily. If we were to stay here a little bit longer, they're having conversations about that, you know, what lessons we're learning here, but how does it apply from the other battlefields? A big part of what we're doing is changing how we train and how we operate. Um, we are changing how we're organized. We have changed our this formation and how we're organized. And I think we've been talking a lot about how we buy things because there's a lot of interest in that. Um, obviously, I'm um, back in D.C., but um, we have to pay attention to those lessons. Um, they're not learned until you actually change. So we can't just talk about these lessons. We actually have to transform and change. Do tariffs and evolving trade policy affect the Army and your ability to get what you need? 
Um, I, I will tell you that I haven't seen anything, you know, you know, right now. We've had a lot of discussions on, um, you know, what we need to do to make sure that we have our drones as a perfect example and parts for drones and, you know, what kind of manufacturing capability that we would need to have um, for those, what needs to be resident um, right here in the country. Um, so we are looking at all those systems. At a time where there's so much focusing, on, so much focus on rebuilding U.S. manufacturing, what does it mean for our defense industrial base? What do you want to see that future defense industrial base look like? Um, I think we're, you know, we're looking at out here all these companies that are coming out here and, and seeing that. You know, I always talk about many, many years ago, a lot, the, there were a lot of commercial, commercial companies um, that were also selling things to the military. This, you know, this is a good example of something, you know, based on uh, um, Chevy Colorado and, you know, and look and what we've done right here. So it's, and I think what we're learning probably goes back both ways. So um, I would like to see a lot more of, of our, you know, industry partners being involved in making stuff for the Army. And finally, we just look around the world, your assessment of the geopolitical landscape and the U.S. Army's ability to lean into that. Yeah, well, I, I, this is a big part of it, is how we transform and, and what we're doing to change. Um, it's probably as volatile as I've seen it in the many years um, that I've been in. And what is really different now is how fast the technology is changing. So, um, you know, it's kind of back to we have to move out. We have to move out with a sense of purpose. We're still going to have to be physically tough, mentally resilient, um, but we're also going to have to adopt this technology and uh, make sure we're bringing it into our formation to make sure we continue to stay ahead of our adversaries.